Today, I'm in the Johnson Valley of California, and I'm standing in a bush. And this is a creosote bush in the form of a ring. Now, if you've been to the American Southwest, specifically the Mojave Desert, you're pretty familiar with the creosote bush. It's pretty much everywhere. And most times it grows just as a single entity, a single bush. But sometimes it grows as a ring. And there's a reason for this. And that reason is because the creosote bush is extremely adept at one thing in particular, and that is pulling water out of the ground, moisture and water. So much so that they grow dispersed because there's nothing really that can grow in between them because the creosote is going to pull that moisture and water away. So other plants struggle to survive in the vicinity of a creosote. That includes its own seedlings, which can be a problem if you're trying to promulgate any sort of species or plant. So what the creosote has done is in some cases, instead of promulgating seeds, it becomes clonal. And what that means is shoots come out from the root system and slowly grow outward. And as those shoots grow outward, they pull that moisture away and the internal shoots die off. Now, as that happens, it slowly grows as a ring, as you can see here. Now, the ring that I started in is probably somewhere around 1,500 years old. That's how long this process takes. The one I passed on the way, probably several thousands of years old. But this ring is the oldest known clonal creosote bush. And it's been dated using two different methods by scientists, not my estimation. But this, the king clone, is estimated to be 11,700 years old. Which means that it began growing right as the Mojave Desert was being formed, from the center point where it first germinated. And as time went on, it grew outward and outward. And as it did that, humans, we're just experiencing the ice age ending. Mammoths were still walking the earth. It was thousands of years before the British islands even became islands from the rising water levels as the glaciers melted. Before then, this whole stretch, it was still connected to mainland Europe. We weren't even domesticating animals or agriculture until about here. And it wasn't until about several meters from its center that humans even started to form civilizations, writing, math, in the Indus River Valley, in Mesopotamia, and in Egypt, and outward. This plant, this single organism, had been alive for thousands of years before we even started to build towns and cities, before the pyramids were built. An entire human life can fit into just a couple inches of growth of outward shoots coming out of the root system. The span of a slightly below average stature man can cover thousands of years. Now, the Western United States, and in particular California, is not exactly foreign to long-aged organisms. This particular bush is 11,700 years old. About an hour away is a clonal oak which is estimated to be 14 to 15,000 years old. And the oldest known single organism, the bristlecone pine, the Methuselah grove, is in central California. And that, those plants, those trees, live to be around 5,000 years old at their oldest. Even the sequoias and the redwoods live for several thousands of years. In regards to clonal organisms, pando, which is a quaking aspen, is considered a single organism, and that's located in Utah, two states to the northeast of California, and that's estimated to be 80,000 years old. It's also known to be the largest single organism by mass, as it stretches out over acres. Now this particular creosote bush is the oldest known at 11,700 years old, and supposedly there might be another one that's slightly older somewhere in the vicinity, though we don't know for sure, or at least hasn't been dated. And then, who knows, maybe it'll be the queen clone at that point. But until then, they'll stay here in the middle of Johnson Valley, 
and continue to grow further outward. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe for more content. And as always, until next time, get lost.